Peggy 16. Returnal is a third-person roguelike sci-fi shooter by the PlayStation 5. The game runs on Unreal Engine, but uses a lot of custom tech, like level generation, global illumination, and a GPU particle system that were all developed here at Housemark. In this video, we'll have a closer look at our programmable particle system and how we used it to create some of the key VFX features for Returnal. This includes things such as some of the vegetation, character effects, like tentacles, and volumetric fog driven by fluid simulations. Let's start off with character effects and tentacles in particular. Tentacles in Returnal are constructed from chains of particles. Our VFX engine allows particles to have parent-to-child relationships. That means each child particle can read its parent's data including its position. We're also allowed to write custom behavior per particle. Here we give the first couple of particles some velocity and tell the rest to follow them. With the ability to customize the particle behavior and data, we can tell each particle to store its rotation as well. With position and rotation data available, we have enough information to create a smooth 3D surface between parent and a child particle. Let's make some of these particle chains follow a moving object. As the renderable surface is constructed per particle at runtime, we can easily modify their appearance in-game. Here, we make the particle switch to a different material and grow the chains longer and surface thicker. We can use signed distance fields to make the particles collide with in-game geometry. And from these collisions, we can spawn new particles or create events, for example, sounds. In-game, we use the tentacles to signal enemy states by changing the tentacle colors and behavior. Here, you can see the emissive color getting brighter before and during the enemy attack. We can access the character bone matrices from our particle system and bind the tentacles to bones or vertices of the enemy mesh. Besides telegraphing enemy intentions, the tentacles give the enemies dynamic secondary motion procedurally without the need for keyframe animation. And when the enemies are defeated, we can detach the tentacles from them to provide a satisfying feedback to the player. But the use of tentacles wasn't limited to just enemies. We made some of the interactive vegetation on Atropos with them as well. In the next segment, we will have a closer look at our fluid simulation tech. We use fluid simulations extensively in Returnal. One of the most important use cases is to simulate airflow around the player. For that purpose, we use a fluid simulation grid that follows Celine as she moves around the levels. We refer to this simulation as global fluid simulation. Game events can apply impulses to that fluid grid. Here we can see a visualization of the fluid velocities appear when Celine fires her weapon. Other player actions like dashing and melee also have an effect on the simulation. Every visual effects system in the game can sample the global fluid simulation. Here we can see the vegetation reacting to bullets fired by Celine. We can also do similar things with almost any actor in the game. Here we can see the enemy bullets affecting the fluid simulation. In Returnal, we use a lot of volumetric fog in our levels. The fog density can be affected with the global fluid simulation, making the fog more reactive. Similarly, we can use the fluid velocities to infect regular particles like the Xeno Archive holograms. And tentacles. In some cases, we wanted to use more detailed fluid simulations. Like here, Freki has its own fluid simulation for the fog that is emitted from its skeletal mesh. Also, there's a separate simulation for the fog on the ground as we wanted to have some extra detail there as well. To emit fog from a skeletal mesh, we made a custom component that converts the mesh into voxels. 
Each of those voxels can emit fog density, and VFX artists have full control of the emission logic on a per voxel basis. To make the fog look more interesting, we can ramp up the density amount and add turbulence into the simulation. Volumetric fog isn't the only way to visualize the density field though. We can do isosurface extraction from the simulation data and give the effect a more solid appearance. This technique was used to bring some of the alien technology and cosmic horror elements on Atropos to life. In the last segment of this presentation, we're going to have a look at how we did some lightweight destruction visuals with our particle system. We do prefacturing of the destructible assets in Houdini. Before the asset is fractured, we do a pass where we separate the interior of the object from its surface. Here the object on the left is the source mesh, the object in the middle is the fractured interior, and the object on the right is the fractured exterior. We export both the interior and exterior meshes from Houdini to Unreal Engine, using a custom format that allows us to retain information such as bounds and pivots. To keep things lightweight, we don't do RBD at all. Instead, everything is done via particle simulation. By using particle simulation only, we can keep the performance costs low enough to afford a thousand pieces per destructible object and several destructibles on screen simultaneously. When a destructible object receives damage, we start detaching the exterior pieces from it first. When its health reaches zero, the whole thing collapses. During collapsing, we take advantage of our particle hierarchies and group particles together. This allows us to move groups of particles together and make them appear as if they were a single bigger piece. When the particle group collides with SDFs, we can detach child particles from it. Naturally, these objects can be destroyed by enemies as well. And we can use the tech to destroy some of our mechanical enemies. The body of the Nemesis boss was rendered and simulated entirely using the particle system. Per particle control of the pieces allowed us to animate them based on where the player bullets hit. We also used a sparse fluid simulation and voxelizer for the Nemesis's head as well. In the later stages, we made the pieces move around by themselves to support the dreamlike atmosphere of the encounter. That concludes our visual effects breakdown of Returnal. We hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching.